Hello, God bless you and welcome to Grace Daily Motivational. Today we're going to be going into something very deep and we're going to be looking at the prophetic ministry and the corruption, the level of corruption in the prophetic ministry and how you can avoid this because you need a discerning spirit. And for those who don't have a discerning spirit, you need to watch videos like this that can enlighten you such that you know what to do when you get into certain kind of circumstances and Oh, we're happy that today Apostle Johnson Sullivan is talking about this topic. He's also going to be talking about how he started prophesying, how the prophetic dropped on him. And he's also going to further talk about the prophetic ministry and certain things that go on that you need to catch. So please just hold on to your seats and watch with the eyes of your spirit because this is going to be very interesting. In an enlightening discourse, Apostle Johnson Solomon shares his personal journey into the realm of the prophetic ministry, a path he embarked on unexpectedly. His narrative begins with an incident during a preaching session, which became a turning point in his life. Solomon was unprepared for the prophetic role he found himself in, especially in the absence of another prominent man of God. And this was the perfect opportunity unknown to Apostle Johnson Solomon who had not even stepped into the prophetic realm. Apostle Suleiman emphasizes the significance of authenticity in prophetic revelation, talking of embracing prophecy with authenticity. He warns against being swept away by the excitement and allure of prophecy. Through his experiences, Suleiman has learned the importance of discernment and staying true to one's spiritual roots. He references the biblical account of the feeding of the 5,000 and Saul's failed attempts at prophecy to highlight the essence of true prophecy, a divine communication of God's plans and desires for humanity. But also, there's the danger of prophecies, which are prophets taking advantage of unknown victims, exploiting them for commercialization. A critical aspect of Suleiman's message is his critique of the commercialization of prophecy. He observes a worrying trend where some prophets prioritize personal gain over spiritual integrity. This commercial approach not only distorts the essence of prophecy but also misguides the faithful. Suleiman argues that the true prophecy is not a commodity for sale but a sacred gift to be used for spiritual guidance. The simplicity of divine communication, Suleiman stresses that genuine prophecy stems from a deep, authentic relationship with God. The relationship is nurtured through consistent prayer and dedicated Bible study. He, however, cautions against seeking supernatural experiences from ungodly sources, highlighting the simplicity and purity of divine communication through prayer. Now watch this video and listen very carefully, because the next voice you'll be hearing is the voice of Apostle Johnson Solomon, as he explains how the gift came and where he warns about people who commercialize it. You really need to understand this because when you do understand it, you would understand how certain things happen and what you should do and what you shouldn't. And that's talking about the spirit of discernment. Watch and we'll be right back after this video. I never knew anything about the prophetic. I didn't pray for it. I didn't fast for it. I was invited to preach in a village. A man of God was also invited. He didn't come. When I came out to preach, people were disappointed. Because they were expecting to see the other big name. I never knew anything about the prophetic. I didn't pray for it. I didn't fast for it. I was invited to preach in a village. A man of God was also invited. He didn't come. When I came out to preach, people were disappointed. Because they were expecting to see the other big name. And I heard, who is so so person? The person ran out. I didn't know the next thing to say. And I said, you are blessed. You are blessed. I heard the second one. You are blessed. You are blessed. When I was done that night, I went back. I said, Lord, what kind of embarrassment was that? And then I said, because you were too overwhelmed. With the fact that you mentioned, that's one thing about the prophetic. If you are not careful, the excitement of the people can make you miss signals from God. I mean, genuine prophetic. You know, prophets 
Can somebody be ministering and people are shouting, Browse, man of God, browse. And he said, Can I do it? I said, Do it. Go deeper, Papa. Do something. Prophet, do something. Prophet, do something. Eh? Encyclopedia. Supernatural encyclopedia. Can I browse in the spirit? Can I browse? I want to browse. And God say, oh, really? You want to browse? You have Wi-Fi. You want to browse? We should be careful because some of these utterances can affect the anointing. One time I was ministering and somebody carried a placard. Profe Apostolic professor of prophecy. So it caught my attention. It sounded nice. So I prophesied on two persons. I now tap my feet on the ground. Apostolic professor of prophecy. The anointing lifted. I know some of us have been preachers for a while. Whether you like it or not, we know how to make up. When you know that something has lifted. You don't like the truth, right? This is me, I will tell you. We know how to make up. When the thing has lifted and I say, Amen. We are going to take a prayer point. When you say, Pastor, do that in the midst of prophetic, something has lifted. He's trying to balance up. We are going to take a prayer point. Prayer point. Prayer point. He's, he's asking for mercy. But the one whose heart is hardened, even when be rebuked, is still going it. And that's what I'm, I'm talking now to genuine prophets. On the mistake not to make. I will soon enter the false prophet and the sorcerers. So now I'm talking to the genuine ones. Most all the prophets you give, most people sow to it. So you have to give money that looks like your age. No, despite all you have collected from people, you are still broke. Because when you devise strategy to take care of yourself, God leaves you alone. No, this is not what you want to hear. This is not the kind of message we want to hear. Genuine prophet. Prophets are men of prayer. Number two, prophets are men of the word. Luke chapter 24 verse 19. Jesus was a prophet mighty in the word and deed. If you are not ready to be a man of the word, quit ministry. Run for a political position. We will vote for you. We assure you that. Because you are, you can, you are not needed here. Can I surprise you? There are people who do not need prophecy. They don't need miracles. They don't need healing. They just need information from God's word on how to grow. So if you don't know the word of God, you have nothing to offer them. I was in a meeting. A prophet came. Some American guy was in the crowd. He crossed his leg. I was just looking. The guy prophesied, prophesied, prophesied. Some great man of God, popular man of God, a white man came, did healing. I saw this guy. He wouldn't stand up. People are worshipping. He wouldn't stand up. I was on the altar. So I was called to share the word of God. And I went to the Bible as I was in ministry. I didn't prophesy. I thank God that a few of us who stand on the efficacy of God's word, I thank God that we are gifted. If not, people will say we are critical because we are not gifted. I can prophesy you back and forth. But I have, God, I have exalted my word above my name. What his name can do? Miracles, signs, wonders. God, I have exalted what my word can do. Psalm 138 and verse 2. I discovered everybody had done things. This guy crossed his leg. He wouldn't move. When I began to preach, I noticed he just stopped. At a, after like five minutes into my message, he did like this. He mm. said, get me a pen, get me a pen, get me a pen. He was looking for a pen. He was writing. All of a sudden, he stood. He was tapping his leg. He was tapping his leg. I was almost worried. I was worried. I was worried. I was... At the end of the service, he met me and gave me a card. I took the card and I gave him my number. He called me. He said, Apostle, we are tired. It's of these so-called gifted people that make us leave meetings of two hours without anything to write down. 
He said to me, say he has been to 72 countries. That he's a deep man. That for you to move him, you must tell him what he doesn't know. I said to him, so why did you jump like that? He said, you were talking of scripture. You had quoted 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I saw the way you were giving out scripture. So I knew this was not a man who memorized scripture. This is a man who eats scriptures. He said, so I took a pen. There's a difference between coming out to cram scriptures. Uh, Matthew 15, 12, no, no, sorry, Matthew 12, 13. No, 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 sorry, Matthew 11. Studying the word of God is no memory verse. Am I coming to talking to somebody here? Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found and I did eat them. Be a man of the world. The pastor, do not see people until you have seen revelations. So we have to analyze. We have the true prophets, then we have the false Acts chapter 13. If you get back, you read verse 6. The Bible talks about one sorcerer. False prophets are prophets who are after their stomach. Three years in ministry, you want to ride a Range Rover sport. Did your father? That gave birth to you have a car so early. Your grandfather, the honor of ministry is enough. Why, why being greedy? Look at this. Only greed. Gehazi became leprous. Only lie. Ananias and Sapphira were killed. Only pride. Pride. Nebuchadnezzar was turned to an animal. God turned into the minister of agriculture. Went into the bush and was studying a course on animal husbandry. And his, his special emphasis was on man as a course. Pride only. Only disobedience. Adam lost it. You, you are proud. You are arrogant. You are greedy. You are just one of such characters God took out people. You, you are five. So the hellfire you are going, we don't know if it has been created. Until you make up your mind deliberately. Sorcerers! There are people that go to witch doctors to do ministry. What is to use the devil to work for God? In other words, you are saying, God, I know you can't help me. So I went to the devil to help me. You may not like what I'm saying. But it will help you. Many pastors. God told me, he said, anyone that goes to the devil for power may get money, may get fame, may get popularity, but he will lose security. He can die like a chicken. The prophetic. Diabolic prophets. Diabolic sorcerers, magician, first Kings chapter 18, first Kings 18 19. You hear what the Bible talks about? There were 400 prophets of Ba that sat at Jezebel's table and 450 prophets of the groove. They were there. Diabolic prophets, listen to me, Apostle Suleiman. How do I hear God genuinely so I don't play games? Very easy, very easy to hear God. I don't need to lay hands on you. I don't need to impart you. If you read God, 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 soon you will hear God, hear God, hear God, hear God, hear God. By the time you wake up at night, after praying from, from 11 till 1, you pray till 2, pray till 3, Carry the Bible, study for two hours. You drop it, you go on your knees, you pray. Carry the Bible again, study. The next day you study. Today, that voice will come out. And you start growing it. It comes little by little. It can come as word of knowledge. As you focus and you are growing it, you are growing it. It becomes a voice you are used to. I remember then, when I'm going to programs, Reverend Kinsley is traveled now to help me do something. And Reverend John, will go with me. Before I get them, I tell them the cases. 
I said, John, forget there's somebody will be sitting at the extreme end by the right, putting on the red top and the black trousers. This is what brought him. Another person, I see them in the place of study. When we get there, I notice I notice them because John, Reverend John is he was the elder brother to Thomas. And by his training, he's a business administrator. He's somebody, if it, if it is, he has to be sure. I'm wondering today, he's manifesting the supernatural. I say, Father, you can use anybody. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. And then I notice once he come and I tell him, he say, okay, Reverend Kingsley, that one is an evangelist. Yes, 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 I believe, sir. I believe they'll be there. Reverend John will say, hmm, okay, sir. When we get there, I notice he's looking around, he looks to the left. To confirm, it looks, looks, confirm. Sometimes the car, I said, somebody will come like this, like this. So when we get there, I call, I said, John, what did I tell you about this person? And he confirms everything. And I said, okay. I saw it in the place of study. You have prayed with me over 20 years. You have prayed with me, Reverend Have you ever had me pray for anointing? Lord, as we go to this program, Lord, move. Lord, as we go to the program, move. Lord, as we get there, let the sick be healed. You are a talkative by nature. But because you have a crusade, for three days you become mute. Because you believe you have to gather anointing. Gather anointing. You have to gather anointing. After the program, you go back to your normal lifestyle. God is looking for people to use, not people that will use him. Can that become your natural way of living and see the power of God? I trust we're blessed by that powerful revelation from Apostle Johnson Solomon. And um, if at this point you haven't subscribed, please kindly click the subscribe button so that you can always be notified whenever we're releasing our very next video. And also um, like the video, you know, so that YouTube can actually recommend this video to others who need to be very, very aware of what is prevailing in churches today such that you don't fall prey everybody needs you know discernment but if you don't have discernment as a gift then that's why you have videos like this that can help you such that you don't fall into error and once you fall into error you could be held captive for a very long time so do well to like the video and share so that people can get to know more about these kind of revelations that people don't necessarily open up and talk about on a day-to-day -day basis because it's actually seen as an opportunity to commercialize the gift and do well to share the video so apostle johnson Suleiman's message resonates with a call for humility prayer and a deep engagement with scriptures you saw how we advocated for a return to the basics of faith where prophecy is not a tool for personal gain, but a sacred channel through which God communicates with his people. Apostle Justin Suleiman's journey into the prophetic ministry serves as a testament to the power of authentic spiritual growth and the dangers of losing one's way in the pursuit of spiritual gifts. And until next time, will remain grace, daily motivation, where the supernatural has become the normal. God bless you and see you in our next one.